Tests show over 45% of synthetic oils on store shelves fail to meet their own wear protection claims. Yet most drivers still pour them in, trusting the label. If you've ever done the same and hoped for the best, you're about to find out which oils quietly let you down. Today, I'll show you seven synthetic oils you should never touch, and the three that actually protect your engine like they claim to. And by the end, you'll know exactly which bottles to trust and which ones are quietly killing your engine. Let's light this candle. Number 7. SuperTech Full Synthetic Walmart Brand You ever grab one of those bottom shelf jugs for half the price of the name brands and think, oil's oil, right? Yeah, not quite. SuperTech looks like a deal until you open an engine that's lived on it. I've seen lifters coated in varnish and oil rigs glued tighter than a seized bolt. Sure, it's API certified, but real world testing tells a different story. Labs like Blackstone and PQIA found high volatility and weak detergents. It burns off faster and leaves more grime behind. The base stock is Cheap Group 3, but the additive package that prevents wear and carbon buildup is watered down. It's like cleaning a diesel piston with dish soap. After 5,000 miles, viscosity tanks. Your 5W30 starts acting like 5W20. And that startup rattle you hear? That's metal meeting metal. Saving 10 bucks sounds smart until you're paying two grand for a timing chain repair. For an old beater, fine. But if you care about keeping your engine alive, skip it. Next up, a brand that looks legit, built on decades of trust, but hides a label trick most drivers never notice. Number 6. Quaker State Full Synthetic This one fools a lot of people because of the name. Quaker State's been around forever, and back when oil changes were every 3,000 miles, it earned that reputation. But today, its full synthetic line just doesn't keep up. Pop a valve cover after 6,000 miles and you'll see it. That golden brown haze baked onto the clam lobes. That's oxidation, oil breaking down under heat because the additives quit early. The label brags about wear protection, but lab tests tell another story. Low detergents, high volatility, and oil that evaporates faster than it should. In turbo engines, that turns into coked lines and sticky VVT solenoids. The real issue is consistency. One batch holds up fine, the next one shears down like it's trying to escape the bottle. The base stock's decent, but the additive balance? Sloppy. It'll keep a commuter car alive, sure, but in a modern DI or turbo setup, you're asking for blow-by and deposit buildup before 100,000 miles. It's not the worst, just lazy. A brand coasting on its past instead of improving its chemistry. And these days, that doesn't cut it. The next oil? It wears its performance badge like armor, but under the hood, it's all talk and no torque. Number 5. Lucas High Performance Synthetic This one's gonna rattle a few toolboxes. Lucas built a cult following with those clear demo machines at part stores. Crank the handle, watch the gears spin, think, wow, that's smooth. Yeah, that's marketing, not chemistry. Lucas High Performance Synthetic sounds like race oil, but it's really mid-tier with a big ego. It promises long drain intervals and race-proven strength, but oil analysis says otherwise. The additive package runs light, less detergent, less anti-wear metal, and that film breaks down fast under heat and load. I ran it in a 5.3 LS for 6,000 miles. Iron and aluminum wear were nearly double what I see with Valvoline or Pennzoil. That's not coincidence, that's weak protection. And Lucas loves thick oil. That sticky, heavy performance feel might look good in the bottle, but modern engines need fast flow, not syrup. That thickness just slows circulation and starves the top end when cold. In an old big block, fine. In a modern daily, it's trouble waiting to happen. Old school branding meeting new school engines and losing. Lucas still makes great fuel additives and assembly tubes, but this oil? Leave it for the demo machine. Number 4. Castrol GTX Magnatech Synthetic Blend and Full Synthetic This one hurts to say because I used to swear by Castrol. Back when oil changes were every 3,000 miles, GTX was rock solid. But Magnatech isn't that oil anymore. It's mostly marketing wrapped in a shiny label. Their big claim? Intelligent molecules. You've seen the ads, green particles clinging to pistons like sci-fi glue. 
Sounds high tech, but it's just ordinary friction modifiers that every decent oil already uses. Castrol trademarked the idea and called it innovation. Engines that live on Magnatec tell the story. Amber varnish on the valve train, viscosity breakdown around 4,000 miles, detergents that quit early. It protects fine at first, then fades fast. To be fair, Castrol's edge line still deserves respect, but Magnatec's a knockoff riding the family name. And most buyers don't even realize it's a synthetic blend, not a true full synthetic. It won't blow your engine overnight, but it'll age it faster. Sticky VVT solenoids, cold start rattle, and that brown film on the dipstick that never wipes clean. Those intelligent molecules stopped being smart a long time ago. Good enough for a beater, not for a keeper. Next up, an oil that hides behind European engineering, but the chemistry doesn't live up to the accent. Number 3. Liquimoly Top Tech 4200 and similar Euro-spec synthetics. Liquimoly makes great products, no doubt. Their additives are top-notch. Their synth oil line is solid. But the Top Tech series, especially 4200, is one of the most overrated Euro-spec synthetics you'll find in US stores. It's sold like a miracle, made in Germany, OEM approved, precision engineered. Sounds perfect, right? The truth is, TopTech 4200 was built for modern diesels with particulate filters, not for most gas engines. It's a low saps oil, low in sulfur, phosphorus, and ash. That keeps emissions clean, but it also means weaker anti-wear protection. I've seen it plenty of times. Drivers switch to it thinking German oil is better, then come back with ticking lifters and noisy cam phasers. Drain it, swap in a proper full saps oil like Mobile One ESP or Amsoil Euro, and the noise disappears. Those fancy ACEA and VW specs look impressive, but they're tuned for emissions, not longevity. Long life just means long drain intervals, not long engine life. Liquimoly is still a good brand, but top tech's a specialty oil pretending to be universal. Great in the engines it was built for, but in most American cars, it's like wearing snow tires in July. The next oil, it's worse. It doesn't just fade, it falls apart faster than anything I've tested. And you can buy it just about anywhere. Number 2. Amazon Basics Full Synthetic This one blew up fast. Cheap price, clean bottle, and that Amazon logo that makes people think it's secretly premium. And yeah, it's bottled by Warren Distribution, the same company behind some decent private label oils. But that doesn't mean it's a good formula. Amazon Basics Full Synthetic barely clears the minimum for modern API certification. That's fine if all you care about is keeping the oil light off, but it's not what you want protecting a hot running or high mileage engine. I've seen it burn off faster than almost anything else in a turbo car. That's high volatility. It evaporates under heat and leaves you a quart low halfway through the interval. Once it thins out, film strength collapses, and that's when you get lifter tick, worn cams, and timing chain stretch. Its detergent system is weak, too. Around 5,000 miles, you'll see dark oxidation spots on the dipstick, and they only spread. I pulled valve covers after a year on this oil. Caramel color buildup everywhere, not sludge, but not clean either. And Amazon's marketing? Full of buzzwords like advanced protection and resists breakdown, but no data, no base stock group, no TBN numbers, nothing that actually proves strength. That's your first red flag. If you're changing oil every 3,000 miles on a simple commuter, fine, but stretch your intervals, tow, or run hot turbos, and it'll give up early. Cheap oil always costs you, either now or later. Amazon Basics is like budget tires in the rain. It'll roll, but don't be shocked when it slips right when you need grip. And that brings us to the worst of the bunch, a name built on nostalgia that hasn't kept up with modern engines. Number 1. STP Full Synthetic Motor Oil This one tops the list because it's the perfect mix of nostalgia, overconfidence, and underperformance. STP sounds bulletproof. Vintage race ads, garage legends, the Richard Petty name. But that was 50 years ago. The brand you see now barely resembles the one that earned that reputation. Modern STP Full Synthetic is pure bare minimum compliance. It meets API SP and ILSAC GF6, sure, 
But that's like saying a burger meets the definition of food. It doesn't mean it's good. The base oil is low-grade group 3 with just enough additives to survive certification tests. After that, you're on your own. Every teardown tells the same story. Brown varnish, sticky lifters, and a thin gummy film on the cams that wipes off like cooking oil. That's oxidation and sheer breakdown. Thick under heat, thin under load. The worst combo there is. It also leaves residue around the pistons. That turns into blow-by. Hot gases sneaking past the rings and contaminating your oil from the inside. You won't notice it at first, but by the time compression drops, it's too late. STP still sells because it's cheap easy to find, and wearing a full synthetic badge. Most people never know the difference until the lifter tick starts, the oil pressure light flickers, or the car begins drinking oil between changes. Then the truth comes out. STP's legacy deserves respect. The product in that bottle doesn't. It's a classic name running on fumes. So that's the seven synthetics I'd never pour into anything I care about keeping alive. But not every oil on the shelf is junk. A few still live up to the hype and prove chemistry matters more than branding. Let's flip the script. Here are three synthetic oils that actually work. Number 3. Pennzoil Ultra Platinum Full Synthetic This is what synthetic oil is supposed to be. Pennzoil Ultra Platinum isn't just marketing, it's real chemistry. What makes it special is where it starts. Not crude oil, but natural gas. They call it Pure Plus Technology, and for once, that's not hype. It means the base oil's incredibly pure. No sulfur, no wax, no leftover junk. I've seen the proof. Engines running this stuff for 100,000 miles come apart cleaner than others at half that. No sludge, no varnish, just spotless metal. It holds up under heat, traffic, long drives. It doesn't care, it just stays slick. Lab data backs it up. 65% cleaner pistons than standard synthetics and low oxidation even past 7,000 miles. That's rare. Sure, it's not the cheapest jug on the shelf, but if you drive a DI or turbo engine, it's worth every penny. You can even feel it. Smoother cold starts, quicker oil pressure, sharper throttle response. This is one of those oils that actually rewards good maintenance. Strong, stable, reliable, the opposite of marketing fluff. But the next oil? That one takes reliability and stretches it for miles. Number 2. Mobile One Extended Performance If there's one name that's earned its keep in every kind of engine, it's Mobile One. But the extended performance version isn't just a relabel. It's the long drain heavyweight that actually earns its miles. Mobile didn't slap 15,000 miles on the bottle for marketing. They built it to last, and it does. Its triple additive system keeps oxidation low and film strength high, even after months on the road. I've run it in commuters, trucks, and turbos. Same story every time. Clean metal, no sludge, no varnish. Oil analysis agrees. Low wear metals, stable viscosity. Most synthetics start thinning out by 5,000 miles. This one doesn't. That keeps bearings cushioned and pressure steady even at 400 degrees. Yeah, it costs more, but if you're cutting your oil changes in half and still getting top tier protection, that's money well spent. It's not flashy, it's dependable. The kind of oil you pour in and forget because it just works. But the next one? That's the one I call engine insurance. Number 1. Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic This is the one I keep on my own shelf. Amsoil's been at this longer than most people realize. They were making synthetics back when everyone else thought it was just race car snake oil. And they've never stopped pushing the formula. Their signature series is the closest thing to bulletproof protection you can pour into an engine. I've seen oil analysis from trucks running 20,000 miles or more that still come back with wear metals in the single digits. That's not marketing, that's chemistry done right. The base stock is Ultra Pure PAO, the same synthetic backbone used in aviation oils, and it's loaded with a strong additive system that neutralizes acids, prevents sludge, and keeps viscosity rock steady under heat. I've run it in everything from high revving four cylinders to towing V8s, and it never flinches. Cold start, smooth. Desert highway, still smooth. After 10,000 miles, oil pressure reads the same as day one. You'll pay more for it, no doubt, but this is what long-term peace of mind costs. If you hate wrenching and love your engine, 
this is the bottle you reach for. So there you have it, seven synthetics that don't deserve a place in your garage, and three that absolutely do. Now before you go shopping, remember this, the best oil in the world still can't fix skipped maintenance or cheap filters. Follow your intervals, use the right viscosity, and don't buy hype just because the bottle looks tough. Because marketing can talk a big game, but your bearings, your cams, and your pistons, they don't lie.